Well, I regret to say that Joanna Podolska from the University of Łódź could not join me. Uh, and therefore, we, we discussed and found that it was better that the text that I present is entirely mine, but you will see that she is represented in, in uh, my, my uh, paper. And uh, I, I could not have done this without the help of uh, the Marek Edelman Dialogue Center and Joanna Podolska. Um, there are so many interesting uh, discussions that I would really like to pick up on, but I ha with uh, 20 minutes, I have to be, uh, I have to be uh, economize. Uh, so I think that I will start with just commenting that um, the linguistic turn uh, presented in Oliver uh, Plesov's uh, uh, presentation is something I will also touch. And I will also uh, 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 speak a little bit about the material turn and what we do when there are no objects. Um, when it comes to Novakovsky's uh, 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 paper about, uh, or the question of uh, if uh, our narratives can be in danger of overwriting uh, the, 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 the atrocities or the things that happen. Uh, these are things that I am absolutely discussing and uh, uh, treating in my project. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, How can we educate coming generations about the Holocaust in a manner that not only keeps memories alive, but give young people practice, uh, uh, the tools to practice moral reasoning? Uh, the question was the starting point of a network uh, of institutions of higher education that have met annually since uh, 2016 for a workshop in Łódź. This is an arena for young people with background in history, visual communication, media and journalism to learn Holocaust history. And they work with the cross-disciplinary concept development of commemoration. They come from Germany, uh, Poland, Norway, um, and university colleges and universities and art academies from these countries. Um, and uh, the <coughs> three first workshops took place in, in Łódź, looking into the history of Litzmannstadt ghetto. In a future development of the coalition, new questions will be asked and new uh, or different arenas and sites will be explored. In order to give an outline of uh, how this is carried out, I use the 2017 workshop as an example. The students and tutors started a 10 days long journey at the World War II Museum in Gdańsk uh, and traveled uh, via Helmno nad Nerem to Łódź, uh, the, the final destination, and situated at Centrum Dialogo. A mixture of guided tours and history lectures were followed up with discussions and concept development by the students. Each workshop ends with a questionnaire where the students can answer anonymously uh, to a uh, number of questions. And uh, I think that this question is uh, very central. <coughs> We must keep in mind that the replies come from their own perspective. How can such knowledge be assessed? With 19 participants representing China, Pakistan, the US, Iran, Germany, Norway, and Poland, it was evident their previous knowledge about history and memory varied. However, they came with their own backgrounds of oppression of atrocities from their uh, countries. 
For many of them, the concept of ghetto versus concentration camp or death camp was new. Also was the difference between the Warsaw ghetto and Łódź, such as leadership and consequences for the population. Um, the deportation of the children between zero and 10 years from the ghetto in September 1942 was possibly the topic the students found hardest to digest. Access to information is not always enough to contribute reflected understanding. This kind of educational praxis balances among um, the inner process of acknowledgement connected to the pilgrimage the hedonism of tourism and the school journeys play with the limits of the teacher's tolerance, as Kyrie Kvarndok has described in his doctoral thesis. Um, I must add that I have found the students' dedication and will to commit to this complex matter uh, um, uh, exemplary. Uh, but knowing from my own perspective, how long it takes to, to get a fragment of understanding. Uh, I, I think that during 10 days, one, one has to acknowledge that there is a limit of how much they are able to digest and how they can respond to these things. However, I think that if my students had been present here, they would have loved Karen's presentation yesterday and they would have recognized many of their perspectives. Um, uh, talking about the hedonism and of uh, tourism, um, thoughtless behavior in Holocaust memorial sites from Auschwitz to Berlin, visitors apparently not reflecting deeply on their behavior on such places. Inappropriate posing and thoughtless selfie-making in memorial sites have been addressed in several critical articles and art projects. These approaches may be efficient, but I question the long-time effect. Shaming and humiliation are poor vessels to nurture a change of mind. What if unwanted behavior comes from a place of not having the capacity of imagining the lives and suffering of others? What if they need assistance to retrieve their own humanity lost in a narcissistic and populistic society? To quote Inaro Gachi from yesterday. Helping a young person to be capable of imagining the unbearable, as uh, in the quote uh, that I initiated with, um, um, <clears throat> is the attention behind my project, which is called This is a Human Being. For those not familiar with the term artistic research, it means researching through an artistic profession, through creation and through the reflection and contextualization to relevant projects. Becoming a part of the network, I was looking for a way of linking my contribution to the students' workshop with my overall research question. What is the role of illustration in our time as the visual turn has reshaped our relationship to the image? To approach such a complex matter as the Holocaust through illustration may seem like a risky or ill-considered decision. In our daily vocabulary, illustration is often used as a metaphor for matters of trivial or banal character. And it is exactly this notion I would like to challenge. I draw attention to the fact that the word to illustrate comes from Latin illustrare, meaning to throw light upon, opening up for the meaning to enlighten. In a contemporary definition of illustration, the medium is no longer a defining factor. But the um, obligation to convey a message usually provided by, but not always by, 
another author remains. I accentuate this. This is possibly what differentiates um, uh, art and design, that in design and thus illustration, uh, you have this obligation to know that you have a message that you are conveying and to have a focus on the audience you are addressing. I don't say that art don't, doesn't do that, but not all artists are comfortable with this limitation. <clears throat> to be an illustrator is to leave your, sorry, to leave your uh, own ego uh, behind and to focus on the other. It means entering a dialogue with another author in order to convey a message. The illustrator's communication tool is the visual language. Coded semiotic messages constructed according to their modality, using understanding of communication theory and social semiotics. Harold Laswell's model of communication from 1948 has been modified uh, by later contributors, and in our time, the interactive element of communication is highly emphasized. In recent uh, decades, one finds a range of um, performative practices within Holocaust studies aiming to transform individuals from passive spectators into socially and morally responsible agents. When piecing together this project, this, uh, th there were certain com commemoration uh, projects that I studied closely, projects that had aspects of being performative monuments, possibly temporary monuments, uh, and also objects and sites that uh, contractually binds its audience in self-aware acts of commemoration. The title of the project uh, gives connotations to Primo Levi's book, If This Is a Man. The title points to the human factor, to the deportation lists consisting of actual names of children who lost their lives in the genocide. The development of a structure began with an investigation of transposition of roles from passive bystander to co-creator, viewer to illustrator, exploring the potential of turning an object into a subject, exploring how content is received, reflected, transmitted, and transformed by the bystander. Could a change of communication chain give a potential for the bystander's development to an engaged contributor in participatory communication? and not only engaged and empathic, but also reflected. A set of elements have been kept through five workshops during two years. The basic elements are the transaction, the participants receiving a small parcel at the entrance of the workshop. Um, with the, uh, when opening the parcel, a moment of curiosity and expectation, all the possible interpretations of gift giving, revealing a small stone inside and finding a number on the inside of the wrapping paper, the gradual building up of information of the site-specific Holocaust history of the children from Litzmannstadt ghetto, and the trauma of the Vielkaspera the deportation of the children between 5th and 12th of September 1942. The participants find um, a list with corresponding numbers of uh, deported children from 1942, and then the list reveal names, age, addresses, and often time of deportation. The stone has several aspects. Uh, one is the connotation of stones to Jewish memory culture, as well as being universal and with multiple affordances. The other is the sensory exploration of the stone. The word grasp is used 
in many European languages to signify understanding. And I remind of Levinas' quote of grasping another human being to transform uh, to not being other. Information given during the workshops emphasize that the stone is not a representation of a human being. It is an act of commemoration and the workshop participants are asked to spend time holding the stone, thinking about what it represents and sensing how it gradually becomes warm in their hand. They are then requested to draw the stone on the inside of the paper, adding the name of the person commemorated. And here I argue that this is an act more than making a drawing and writing of a name. It is an act of involving the viewer, providing a, uh, who is giving a visual reflection over a complex subject, different from the mass consumption of images on all communication platforms daily. In this process, the drawings open up for gradual understanding and awareness as an holistic experience. In order to draw a stone, you have to bring it close to you. You have to let your eyes dwell on it to get an overview, to search for the specific aspects of this particular stone. Making a representation of an object through drawing is a cooperation between the eyes, the hand, and the brain. The visual perception allows investigation of the surface of the object and how shape, color, and optical texture separates itself from the surroundings. And then you have to interpret and recode this information. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there was uh, uh, a question about uh, tactility and object and using for, uh, for people with dementia. And uh, there is a lot of research around tactility and, uh, wait a second, because I never re remember the word, Meca mechanoreceptors, <laughs> uh, uh, which are, uh, uh, yeah, receptors in our hand is particularly in these fingers that are very sensitive and that uh, are helping us both uh, assess information and, and uh, also uh, create memories. Mm, thank you. Um, of all our limbs, the hand make the most varied movements movements that can be controlled at will. Science has thought, uh, sought to show how these motions, plus the hand's various grips of uh, gripping and sensing of touch, affect how we think. While drawing, a mental image is created in your brain as well as on the paper, a reminiscence of the stone is created in your mind. I will shortly address the concept of authorship since part of the visual material derives from participatory workshops of commemoration. The use of visual material, inclusive the drawing and photos taken during the uh, workshops are, uh, is always uh, uh, a procedure of improvement by the contributors. In most cases, there are no other belongings left of the children of the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Many of the identities chosen in this project has no one to remember them. Their families, friends, and neighbors are also dead. Everything we know about them come from the archives. Retrieving their names from the archives and commemorating them with a drawing could be compared to having a scratched old uh, negative and through exposure to light, the image of a human being comes to vision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so the floor is open for discussion. Uh, yes, please. Uh, thank you. 
Um, you were talking obviously about uh, images and trying to involve the participants uh, so that they are part of uh, uh, of the whole thing. But at the same time, we have a phenomenon of people coming to Auschwitz, uh, what you mentioned, and, and taking selfies. Um, I was wondering, what do you think people are thinking in the moment when they're taking photos in the background of the guest chambers? Because obviously what I have seen, these are grown up people. They do seem to understand where they are, but then at the same time, they probably not. Um, and what we should do in order for them to refrain from wanting to do that, because not just putting signs, no photos, but what should we do so that they really understand that what they're doing is not really appropriate? Mm. Thank you. Well, I, I think this is a very complex uh, question, and I don't uh, claim to know the answer. But uh, I can only speculate that uh, I'm, I started with talking about this uh, narcissistic uh, time and the visual image um, has become so uh, predominant to all other senses. And even in the museums, we can see how multimedia is sort of, uh, it's, no, it's not a dialogue, it's, uh, it's, it's a um, rhetoric monologue, very often what's going on. And I think that at the memory sites, uh, people are so used to that they are kind of invisible in a way. They, they don't count, so what, how they behave and what they do uh, is a private uh, matter. Uh, I have sometimes addressed people and asked if they know where they are, and usually it, uh, it, uh, uh, their reactions show that yes, they are very much aware of where they are, but they um, still feel that they, they want to pursue this uh, wish of doing something funny. And it's uh, people of all nationalities. And I have, I'm sorry to say, I've even said, seen uh, Jewish young people behaving very foolishly at memorial sites. So I think that this is something universal. But how do we address it? I think that by, um, by, uh, yeah, uh, uh, by, by holding ourselves uh, uh, responsible to our actions and when we as creative persons uh, do projects, I'm, I'm, uh, I do not want to overwrite history with my project, creating images that will take over for uh, the void uh, that is there. Um, so, um, there are no easy answers, but what I'm trying to do with this project, it will be taken further to a book art project where the drawings of the participants will be shown together with other visual information from the ghetto, the, the um, uh, poster announcing Vielka Spera and uh, other material uh, connecting sort of dots and not uh, erasing a history, but rather uh, creating a, a, a critical dialogue with the viewer. Thank you. More questions? Yes. Uh, thank you. It was very interesting to find new ways how to communicate, but what are the children's reactions? What are the age limits? What do you think that uh, working with these themes when do you start? How do you start? Uh, you know, from from your experience. Mm -hmm. Also in Terezin, there's a Terezin camp. There's lots of children's uh, drawings of children who were killed and died. So, how do you deal with these very complicated uh, stories where there's no happy ending? Obviously, no survival. Mm -hmm. Well, this is discussed both by by uh, authors like Astrid Lindgren who said that you can tell a story as, as uh, tragic as uh, whatever as long as it ends uh, happy. But then there are others who disagree and say uh, we, have to, uh, um, we have to present, at, uh, at least when we're talking about history, we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot uh, give makeup to the, <laughs> to the events. But it's of course always a question of 
uh, how you convey what has happened. And, uh, and um, talking about linguistic uh, codes, all, all human communication is, is, is language. And uh, when you address very small children, you don't uh, stand and look down at them. You, 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 ha you go down yourself and you're in their eyes uh, height and you try to use a vocabulary that they can understand. But you don't hide death, for instance. Yeah. Uh, do you see any more questions? Do you see any question? Or? Does somebody want to make a comment? How well, children react, yeah. Uh, I, the, the participants in my project have been mostly students and then there has been open workshops where there has been mostly adults uh, joining. But there have been some uh, children joining and uh, they, they uh, do not differ from the grown-ups. They, they, uh, maybe they are more open to the part of drawing because some of the grown-ups, if they haven't drawn much since uh, they became adults, they are reluctant to draw. Uh, uh, but I, I always tell them, you know, it's not a matter of, this is, this is not an art contest. This is, uh, this is your contribution, or like uh, as if you had been signing something. It's giving your mark of what, what you see. Um, and, and the children, I feel, understand that uh, very well. And uh, when we have been doing this in uh, Woods, we did this uh, autumn uh, uh, 2018, uh, uh, at the commemoration of the Vjelkarsbera and uh, we later went for a walk around the ghetto and visited the places where these specific children had lived and uh, it was evident that this was very important to those who were there, whether they were children or adults. And then you have the other perspective of those who live in the present area who do not identify with the Holocaust at all. And you can experience uh, children who come behind you and shouting in English because they understand you're a foreigner. Uh, this is not a ghetto, this is my home. Which is also, um, we cannot uh, silence these voices. And I think it's important to listen to them and, and hear our uh, what are their stories? Why, uh, why do they not feel that this, uh, the, the Holocaust is relevant? No, thank you. So uh, let's thank the speaker, speaker again.